What is the difference between Qi, Qi 2, and Apple MagSafe? Welcome everybody to Apple Insider. It is Andrew here, and I'm gonna break down all the differences between Qi, Qi 2, and Apple MagSafe. I'm gonna break this video into multiple sections, going through the basics of Qi versus MagSafe, Qi 2 versus MagSafe, what devices are supported, and which chargers you should be buying for your iPhone. Let's go ahead and get into all of this and kick things off with what is the difference between regular Qi and Apple MagSafe. Qi is the most ubiquitous form of wireless charging. You've probably seen tons of wireless charging pads around. This one here is from Nomad. Here's a nice one on my desk from Tesla, actually, where you can place your phone anywhere on it. There's honestly no shortage of Qi chargers available on the market. Apple's MagSafe, on the other hand, is a little bit different. It's still a wireless charging protocol, but it also involves a ring of magnets around the actual charging coil. This helps with a few different things. First, it helps with alignment. You can properly align your phone so it connects to the charger and it's perfectly centered. With Qi, if your phone is off even a little bit from the center, you can have drastically slower charging speeds and you could never even know. MagSafe helps alleviate those issues. Apple also limits Qi chargers to only 7.5 watts of power. You put your iPhone on here, it's only going to charge at 7.5 watts maximum. Some will only even give you 5 watts maybe. And even that can change again based on placement, heat, and other variables. MagSafe still suffers from some of the same issues, like heat can definitely slow down MagSafe charging, but it fixes some of those things by keeping the alignment proper and by being more efficient than Qi. That's why Apple allows MagSafe chargers to go all the way up to 15 watts of peak charging power versus the 7.5 from Qi. Apple offers two MagSafe solutions to charge your iPhone. First is MagSafe Duo. This is one of the first ones that came out and there is a little bit of a problem with newer phones where the, the charging or the camera bump doesn't quite make clearance around the outer border here, uh, but this will also charge your Apple Watch at the same time. Unfortunately, this has not been updated in years. It doesn't support fast charging and those aforementioned camera bump issues. The other option from Apple is just the Solo MagSafe charging puck, just a standard charging puck. One device will charge your iPhone or your AirPods or any other Qi charger has a built-in USB-C cable. Since we're talking about some of these generalities, MagSafe also can do a bunch of other things. It doesn't have to be a charger, could be a mount, could be a stand, it could be a wallet, all these different things that can magnetically connect to the back of your iPhone, all based around MagSafe. But since we're talking charging here, we're gonna talk specifically about those charging implications between Qi and Qi 2. One thing that you're going to notice a lot on the market are chargers that claim to be MagSafe compatible. And this is such a tricky area. A lot of these chargers will be MagSafe compatible, but not actual MagSafe. See, MagSafe chargers are actually certified by Apple and they'll carry a logo right there on the box. It says made for MagSafe. Apple actually tests these, verifies them before they ever make it to market and it's highly regulated. But a bunch of other chargers can be MagSafe compatible. These are essentially unregulated Qi chargers that have a ring of magnets. They can't even be certified as Qi chargers because the Qi spec will block a ring of magnets around the charging coil. These ones will not give you 15 watts of power and even though they will connect magnetically to the back of your iPhone, they'll be limited to five or seven and a half watts at most, but they will be a lot cheaper. If you see a cool charger that looks really nice and you want to pick it up, but it doesn't say actual made for MagSafe, I would potentially avoid it. Just know that you're not going to get MagSafe charging speeds. You're not going to get the same efficiency. You're really just buying an uncertified Qi charger with a ring of magnets. As long as you're aware of that, it's okay to buy them. It should be safe for your phone. But what about Qi 2? That's the real question to answer in this video. Qi 2 was announced at CES earlier this year and it's based on Apple's MagSafe technology. Apple contributed its own MagSafe technology to the Wireless Power Consortium to build Qi 2. That's why many of the features of Qi 2 are features that we see in MagSafe. Qi 2 has a very similar ring of magnets. They're completely compatible with one another, uh, and it can deliver up to 15 watts of power to your device. So if you have a Qi 2 module, it could power your phone at 15 watts of power, align itself with magnets, everything great and dandy. 
G2 will also be able to work on any device that wants to add it. So it could be, you know, a set of air, a headphone case, it could be an Android phone, and it could be future iPhones. That makes it a little confusing because, I mean, from the surface, they're essentially the same. Both deliver 15 watts of power and have a ring of magnets. So which devices support Qi 2 and MagSafe? Here's the easy answer. If you've got an iPhone 12, 13, or 14 series, you're gonna support MagSafe as well as original Qi. You'll also be able to use new Qi 2 chargers, but you'll only get up to seven and a half watts of power. It's still only going to identify as a Qi charger. The iPhone 15 series is rumored to adopt Qi 2 as well as MagSafe, which means if you have an iPhone 15 series, you should be able to use Qi, Qi 2, and MagSafe to get the fastest possible speeds to your phone. Again, MagSafe and Qi 2 will deliver 15 watts of power to the iPhone 15 series. There are also many Android devices that are going to be supporting Qi 2, and they again should be able to get that maximum speed out of the wireless charging standard. So Qi 2 and MagSafe are so similar. What are the differences in actual consumer products and which ones should you be buying for your iPhone? Here's the way I think it's going to shake out. MagSafe will essentially be the premium end of the market and Qi 2 will be positioned as a more affordable alternative that'll work with both iPhone and Android devices. I think MagSafe devices will continue to use more premium materials. Maybe we'll see more leather goods, more polished metal, like the higher end um, versus Qi 2, where we're gonna have more low cost options because they are cheaper to manufacture. They are still getting you know, tech from the wireless power consortium, but they're not being certified, tested, and badged by Apple, which means that their overall price tag and cost of goods is going to be lower. Qi 2 devices are simply going to be cheaper than MagSafe. There's no way around that. But at least right now, from what we know, charging speed and performance is going to be the same. Qi 2 is again based on MagSafe. So we should still see that same speed, same positioning, everything else between the two of them. If you have an iPhone 15 series or an Android device that supports Qi 2, I would have no problem buying either MagSafe or Qi 2 device. I think you're gonna have a good experience. But if you want like that Apple-esque experience, you want the highest end products that you can buy for your iPhone, you're gonna need to lean more towards MagSafe. Apple will likely only sell MagSafe devices in its store versus Qi 2. We're starting to see some of these questions answered at IFA in Berlin. We saw a first slew of Qi 2 devices coming to market from the likes of Belkin, Anchor, and Zag. We have new products from Mopi that are bringing all these different technologies together. And while they currently don't support any existing iPhones, with iPhone 15, it's going to open a ton more options to Apple users. Even if Qi 2 is a more affordable option and may not be as premium MagSafe, I think this is only going to be good. Apple also still has the possibility of enhancing MagSafe down the line. Qi 2 can be that open standard for everybody, where MagSafe can stay exclusive and Apple can add additional features, whether it's the NFC chip that can be used to determine the case that you're putting on your phone, or maybe Apple could add something different in the future, like data transferring between different devices. I guess only time will tell how that will play out. So what do you think? Would you buy a Qi 2 device or would you stick with MagSafe? Let me know down below in the comments or on Twitter at Andrew underscore OSU. You can also ask me questions on threads at Andrew Hera 941. Otherwise, stay tuned. We've got a lot of coverage, including on Apple's iPhone 15 series, coming up.